Sleepy Hollow Season 3, Episode 12, Sins of the Father. What I really enjoyed about this episode was actually the monster, because this, I felt, was one of the few monsters that they just could not seem to defeat, because we have, like, a really great scene with Joe and Foster where they think they know what's going on. It's like, oh, this is a thing of money. And then the guy gets killed in front of them, and they try to fight it, and it just, like destroys them basically it was about to kill both of them off and i thought they might have done that for a second to joe i was like holy crap they might actually kill him off but fortunately that didn't happen and so we still have you know our full team but that thing was like impossible to defeat there was no answers or anything like that it was like we need to get this scarab they couldn't find the scarab they had no clue where it was they thought they didn't then we find out he you know this guy isn't in control of it i can't remember that guy's name but you know, he's only been in three episodes, and now he's dead, which really did surprise me. I didn't think he'd actually get killed off. But, you know, we find out Niven's just the one with the scarab inside of his body, which was really gross, of course, when it, like, came out of him. But he was the one controlling it. He was basically getting rid of anyone that could have any information on him. And every time they went up against it, it was like, this thing is just we can't beat it like all we can do is find this scarab which they couldn't find and then when they finally do find it Nivens is like hey check this out and he puts it inside of the scarab so it's even harder to take down and fortunately of course that works and that kind of plays into some of the other elements of this episode but I really like this monster because it was one of the few times I felt they truly went up against the creature and just had no chance whatsoever because it, it Typically, they don't go up against the monster in the middle of the episode. It's always, like, at the very end. And they, you know, it's like this, the very first kill happens. They investigate. This happens. Information. Second kill happens. Like, crap, we didn't stop the second one. And then before the third one can happen, that's when they go up against it. Or sometimes maybe the second one. But that's when they go up against it and they stop it. Outside of the Headless Horseman, who, you know, of course, you know, it's Sleepy Hollow, so they couldn't just defeat him. But... Everything else is typically, you know, it's just the monster of the week. They murder, murder, stop it at the end. But they actually went up against it in this episode. And it was like, this thing is unstoppable. Like, it took out some people. And, you know, it fought some of our main characters. It wasn't like the whole team. But it was clear based on that scene, where even with it just being two of the main characters. If everyone was there, we had all five members, of, you know, of our current team. If they were all there, it wouldn't have made much of a difference. They would have distracted it, probably, from killing each other. But it would have just knocked them all down. Like, it would have taken them all out with, like, one hand. I'm pretty sure Grab Foster with, like, one arm was just holding her straight up. So, it didn't really matter. That thing was really tough. And that was probably my favorite thing about the creatures. Like, they actually faced it early on. And then it was just super freaking tough. And they could not do anything to stop it. Or even remotely slow it down. Bullets were just like, oh... You're distracting me. Now I'm just going to choke you to death instead of this person. And then I'll probably get back to them. But I really enjoyed that about the monster for this episode. The other story elements that showed up in this one that I really enjoyed, um, of course, revolve around, you know, family and stuff like that. So we have Abby and Jenny who, in separate scenes, actually go and meet their father. Jenny does end up meeting him first and she talks about how, you know, she you know, always felt like she hated him and stuff like that. And he mentions it was never you or your sister or even your mother's fault. It was, you know, just me. And we kind of get the full explanation uh, with Abby when she found out asked, like, why did you leave? And, you know, we get the story. Basically, he was not the greatest person. So he joined the Navy to kind of reform himself, get some extra money for the family. But he stayed on three consecutive tours. And as he said, you know, once he returned, everything was different and you know his wife had died and his kids were in foster care and then that was kind of it it was like he gave up and so it was like he just wasn't ready I guess he doesn't say that he wasn't ready but I feel like that had to be the thing because even if you're in war you can talk to your family you can find ways especially three consecutive tours you will find a way to you know get in touch with your family but it was almost like when he left he just stayed gone like he didn't even try to get in touch with them he took off and maybe he sent money to them i mean i'm assuming that's possible that he actually did send money to them so they weren't just poor and you know he said that was the reason he started doing it but maybe it was like i'm gonna do this and that's gonna be it and then when he was finally done it's like oh she died and that was it i mean i'm based on the way he said it 
we don't really know if he knew she was dead before he got back or anything. It was just, you know, as far as he put it, everything had changed. Or, like, the world had moved on, I believe he said. And I was like, did he know that beforehand? Or did he not really not know until he got back? Which would, you know, it would explain a lot. Because if he seriously didn't know, then it does prove that he just sent money. It was like, I'm just going to send this money off. And that's all I'm going to do. And I'm not going to be in contact with my family whatsoever. But... Either way, he still left them because even after he came back, he knew his wife was dead and his children were in foster care and he still didn't show up. So, you know, it clearly, like, ultimately, it comes down to he just wasn't cut out. You know, he felt he wasn't cut out to you know, do the whole father thing, which uh, clearly he turned around when he got a whole new family, which is just like a real stab in the back. But... I don't know if they're going to... I'm assuming they're going to continue that because obviously they introduced it and this was finally the episode where the girls get to actually talk to their father. But I'm I'm kind of interested to see where they take it because he, you know, he's just going to be like a side story, of course, unless some really crazy stuff happens. I doubt he'll end up somehow involved in the main, you know, crazy demonic storyline thing. But i don't know i'm looking forward to it for sure i mean what they did in this episode i think was good emotionally speaking i thought it was definitely well done i'm looking forward to how they develop this really weird relationship because you know we've had you know when they do it separately and it's like all right jenny goes to see their father and then abby goes separately to see their father it just makes me wonder what is it going to be like when they're both together and they go you know actually get to see him because they each kind of had it differently. Like, Jenny, it was kind of pure spite. And with Abby, it was just kind of like sadness and curiosity. So I'm curious to see how they balance each other out as far as what they ask and how much more detail, I guess, they try to get out of them. But I really enjoyed it. I did like that side of things. I'm looking... F I am actually looking forward to seeing what they do with it. And I'm more, I'm more interested how they do it because... I feel, you know, it, it could be fairly generic and I guess it would still be pretty interesting because ultimately it's two women who never really knew their father. So, I guess in one sense, even if it's kind of the generic thing, they just meet up in like this little coffee shop or wherever they're at, even if that's how it remains for a little while, I think it could still turn out to be pretty interesting and him trying to get back into their lives. And if that does happen, they would, I would assume at some point, have to learn about his new family and you know we might get that question out of one of them is like you know why didn't you ever come back to us because we got the answer as to why he left but we still don't really get why he never came back to them but he was you know somehow able to pick himself up and start a whole new family but he could never go back to the two daughters he already had and we might get the kind of generic answer like i was gone so long i felt like it wasn't the right thing or something like that which is Never the right answer, by the way. Um, if you leave your kids, you should probably go back, even if it's been a long time. It would help unbelievably. So we might get that generic answer. Hopefully not. But I want to see how they you know, kind of develop things and how much closer they get to their father and, you know, what they decide to do with that relationship. Because it's certainly an interesting concept when we have these two characters, especially with the whole demonic thing, because there's certain, obviously, certain sides of them that they can't talk about. But there's still a lot of questions there as to why he left, and then, more specifically, since we got you know, kind of the, the Navy answer, why didn't he really come back to them? Because he would have, I'm sure there had to have been some way to be like, hey, I'm their dad. I mean, he was married to someone. I'm sure he got notifications like, hey, your wife is dead, and basically, you know, your daughters only have you as family. And maybe he just never responded to something because... Consider, especially considering they were married, all that stuff would instantly transfer to the spouse. Like, if one person dies, it's like, oh, they're married. There is no search. There's no mystery or anything. It's like A, B, and that's how it happens. Like, everything gets transferred. It's automatic. So they would know that he was their father, and I would assume it would just have to be he was like, not for me, I guess. But like I said, we'll kind of have to see uh, what happens there. Um, the other kind of side of the storyline was definitely Abby just in, you know, on her own kind of starting over and I don't know what to expect from that because when she does the symbol in the last episode it's like okay that's crazy 
And then in this episode, she just flat out sees the symbol on randomly on glass. And it's not just the red symbol, like, you know, in her blood or like it was on the chalk wall or on the uh, stone wall. It's glowing and everything. And then we find her at the end of the episode. She's got it in this notebook. I wonder how long it took someone to do that because they, they have people, like, that's their job is to, like, just do the scribbles and write this and that. And that just takes forever. But... We have all this stuff in this journal, and she has, like, the big symbol. And then we actually see her kind of, like, cross her arms and, I guess, mimic the symbol. So I don't know what that means, but it's freaking me out because I knew it was going to be an issue. Obviously, her hand is moving, and she doesn't even realize until she looks at her, you know, the bloody symbol. But now we have it where she's in a meeting and stuff, and she just looks over, and she actually says out loud, beautiful. And I thought what they were going to do is have Danny say, like, oh, did you say something or something like that. But ultimately, no one notices, really. But I was like, that's a huge leap from her doing the little symbol unintentionally. And I was like, oh, that, yeah, that's a little messed up. Like, that's not great. And then just randomly seeing this glowing symbol on the glass, which visually I thought actually looked really cool because it was on, like, clear glass. It wasn't, like, just on a wall or anything. So I was like... It actually looks really awesome because you could see through the middle of the symbol still. So I was like, that's actually, it's kind of cool that they did it on, you know, kind of a glass surface. But I don't, once again, I don't know what to expect from that because I kind of said the same thing last time. It's like, uh, I'm not too sure what to really think about this. Like, it's clearly a bad thing, but I don't know if she's going to be drawn back. I don't know if it means she has some residual power within her or anything like that I just don't know what it means or what it you know what she's being drawn to is such a huge mystery and they have glimpses and stuff where we get to see the symbol like on the stone wall and everything so we might get it because 10 months and you know we saw the crazy detail map in the um, in season premiere 10 months is a long time and it's you know a lot of stuff is going on so she had the crazy detail map. She saw that symbol somewhere, but we don't really know where she first saw that symbol inside of whatever, like, that crazy alternate world was. So I think we might be getting some flashbacks to when she first discovered it, but that might not happen until everyone else realizes that, you know, the extent as of to what's going on. Because Jenny mentions, like, you know, I can tell that you're different, like, you're trying to readjust. And, of course, Danny sees it when she's at the shooting range, like, you know, she's off a little bit. So, I don't know when that's going to come up, but I feel like we're going to have to get some flashbacks because for her, it may have just been like, oh, I saw this random symbol and that was it. And it could have been like just imbued with magic and she had no freaking idea and she's just like instantly, you know, infected or something crazy. But it's clearly serious, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out. Um, I don't know if we should expect her to somehow turn evil for a little bit or something crazy like that but she's clearly gonna go a little crazy and she that was one of the other things with her father where it was like she her mom went crazy and he's like oh that'll never happen to you and i'm like very convenient for that line to come up because she's totally going crazy right now but it she'll be fine of course we know it's not like she's gonna die or anything but i don't know i'm looking forward to seeing the answer as to what this symbol is what it means and where it comes from and why it suddenly has this crazy connection because before when she was in the other realm it was just like she's you know talking to herself and stuff and it's like well yeah she's kind of going nuts but it wasn't like this symbol affected her or anything like that there were like subtle nods to like oh here's this symbol here or she's staring at the symbol like what are you or something like that it was kind of none of that and then when she's out is when it seems to have this weird residual effect. And who knows? Um, Ichabod may or may not have some random memory of Betsy Ross. Like, oh, she was gone for a long time. And now I realize that may or may not have been where she was. And she was acting a little weird. And this is how that got solved. So, who knows? I doubt it'll actually end up being that easy. Where he just remembers Betsy Ross was gone and came back. But, who knows? It's, it's Ichabod. He remembers all sorts of crazy stuff. But... I really liked what they teased in this episode for that one. Um, Pandora and the other one, I forgot if they call them like the hidden one or whatever the name is, the weird name they gave them. They have an interesting moment as well. 
in this episode because that was the big thing was like oh she clearly wants to be equals with him and love is a part of her character and he says it's weak and stuff like that and in this episode it's like okay he's kind of turning things around it seems that way he gives her some of her power back and she's like oh i only got a bit of my power and he's like now you know how i felt and i was like oh he's totally screwing this up like he's making an enemy out of her possibly but he's like, you know, you want to be equals. And he mentions it because she never actually said it. But he's like, you want to be equals, then you'll suffer as I, you know, as I suffer. And I was like, that is not the greatest way to do that. But we'll see how that plays out. She didn't exactly seem excited by that concept of being equal. So I don't know how things are going to play out between the two of them. But I like the way that they did it because it seemed like he was taking a good step. Like, oh, he's recognizing how how weak she is because she's trying to help him he's like okay you know what i'll give you some of your power back and he mentions you know his power grows stronger every day but he still kind of pulled a full-on dick move with her and was like yep now you know how i feel and it's like if you have enough power you know and i'm assuming because she transferred her power to him if he did that and transferred all of her power back he'd still be super super weak so, if he said it that way, then I'd understand, but the way he did it was just like being an a-hole, where it's like, yep, I only gave you a little bit because now you know how I feel, and it's like, wow, and it's like, you're going to suffer because I'm suffering, it's like, you know, I understand that, in a sense, yes, that's equal, but it's like, if you can give her all of her power back, then maybe she'd be able to help more, because he says, like, you know, I feel crazy, like he's going crazy, summoning one monster at a time to kind of grow his strength little by little. So, you know, like I said, if he explained it that way, like, I'm still not at full strength. Once I'm, once I'm at full strength and I can do what I need to do, you'll instantly have all your power back as well. But it's like, nope. Instead, you're just not getting all of it simply because I want you to suffer like I have. So, he just, he explained it in, like, the dickish way possible. So, it's like, wow, it just makes him a complete a-hole. But I don't know if she's gonna turn on him or what but he's definitely not helping himself i'll put it that way he's not helping make it a great relationship for the two of them so i don't really know where it's going to be headed but certainly looking forward to that i really can't wait to see what they do with this symbol stuff um there's also uh with nivens we have corbin's file which he finds and it turns out he's turning that into i'm pretty sure the guy that danny's talking to on the phone well, he was talking to him at the end of the episode, so it was definitely him. But it's the guy that he met um, in front of the house. So that's what I meant to say. I'm pretty sure that was the exact same guy because they show, um, they show like the little recap early on in the episode. So I'm assuming that that was the same guy. And he kills Nibbins after getting this file. He's like, you know, we set you up with this and that. And then he kills him inside of his car, which you know you're a, a, like a crazy powerful villain if you kill someone inside your own car because... That's just like DNA all over the place. But it's like, yep, boom, you are done. So whenever someone does that, it's kind of that weird show of power. Like, they are above and beyond evil. And this is like normal, human, secret, crazy government evil. So now we have a new idea as far as antagonists. And we don't know what's on that file. It was just a file. One little folder, too. It didn't. It wasn't like a thick folder or anything. It was like, it could have been like probably six pages in that thing, maybe ten pages worth of stuff, but it was a tiny little file, and we just don't really know what's on there. It's going to lead to something crazy, and clearly it involves people important within the FBI, but I'm assuming it's going to come all around again to magic because it was one of Corbin's secret files, so it has to be you know, something magic-based, at least I, I'm assuming that, but... I love that tease at the end of the episode. That was one. That was a very cool scene. I'm like, okay, I wasn't expecting a new layer, you know, of antagonist to go up against these characters. But I'm really excited to see where they take that because it's just randomly this brand new thing, and I, I'm not sure how many episodes we have left. I, I would assume not too many, but considering they just introduced it, it's either going to branch off into the next season, which is one of the really unique things about this show. They will introduce stuff, like, in the middle of the season, and then that carries on into the next season. So who knows how it'll play out. It could get solved with by the end of this season. 
or it will continue on as the main issue next season if um, either alongside or as the only issue if they end up defeating Pandora and the Hidden One uh, during this season, which I honestly don't think they will because as weak as they are, or as weak as the guy is, as he says he is, they still can't just go in there and try to kill them because they would need so much more than they truly have. So I don't know what issues they're going to continue to have um, or you know, what issues they're going to solve or continue to have in the next season. But I'm really excited to see what they do with this random file. Hopefully, you know, because I don't think we have too many episodes left, hopefully it does pick up really, really fast and we get a lot of answers, even if it isn't solved by the end of the season. I would love to get a ton of answers because we seriously know nothing now. Like, we just found out it exists. So I'm hoping we get a lot of, at least clues, as to what it could be or what it's going to reference if it's going to be something big or something like that. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, very curious about the next episode because apparently the devil's in it. So don't really know what else to say about that, but I'm looking forward to it. But I want to know what you guys thought about this episode, so please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And because we now have the introduction to this file, whatever evil this will somehow cause, I want to know what you guys think it is. I know that's insanely wide open because we have... Uh, is literally connected to nothing at this point but do you guys think it will somehow tie into the hidden one or do you guys think it will be some other different evil magic thing that the government is going to be using to do something randomly it's probably not actually the fbi it's probably just those people just happen to be in the fbi because that's how every evil organization is it's like oh we have leaders from all of these things so it probably has nothing to actually do with the fbi it just happens to be that guy is, you know, one of the heads of the FBI. And it'll be some other people from other organizations, like I said. But do you guys think it'll tie in to them, you know, to our current villains, Pandora and the Hidden One? Or do you guys think it's going to be some other new great evil? Because either way, I'm excited. I hope personally that it's something brand new because that would be another easy way for them to finish off our current big bads. And then they still have something to kind of continue on for the next season. But... Even if it does end up tying in, I'm very curious to see how just this random file is so important when Nevins already knew and was already working for Pandora. And that's kind of why I think it has to be something brand new, because if that was what they are worried about, Nevins was already there. But I want to know your speculations about that. Um, definitely want to know what you guys think about the devil thing in the promo as well, because that was just really cool to me. So please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.